So here I've rewritten our problem. And remember, we're trying to solve for the coefficients m and b for linear regression um, for an arbitrary data set. And we computed that A transpose A as a matrix equals 1 over the determinant of that matrix, which we found was D times, that's a D, times Xi squared minus, let's use the indices I and J here, Xi times Xj. So this is 1 over the determinant times our matrix, which was? Um, to not conflate these indices, let's call these indices k. This was, I believe, d here for the inverse. Um, on the bottom right, we had sum of the squares xk squared minus k xk. I'll stop writing from 1 to d. It's just getting a little bit annoying. Minus sum k xk. But I'll always write the um, the subscript that we're um, summing over. So this is A transpose A inverse. Now A transpose Y, um, well, I can't remember if I wrote it. But if you remember what A transpose looks like, um, oh, we, we computed A transpose Y. Yeah, now I remember. But the, um, the thing is that we'll have to be careful about indices, because I believe we use the indices I there as well. And we're, we've already used i, we've already used j, we've already used k, so let me call them l. So this was sum x, l, y, l. l goes from 1 to d. And then on the bottom part of this uh, two-component vector, it was just the sum of the y's. OK, so all of this mess is the left-hand side of this expression. Let's multiply these two matrices and see what we get. Um, so let's just do that. Then we get, and let's keep this determinant factor here. And I'm writing all of this because um, you'll see that it relates to something you may have seen in a course on statistics or probability. So then we multiply d by this. And we multiply this by this. I'm just going to do this all out. d times this sum uh, over, it's just L, one index, x, L, y, L, minus this expression. There's two sums here now, k and L, x, k, y, L. That's the first component of this vector. And the second component is this times this. Now we have a bunch of stuff going on here. Um, plus this times this. So let me write the plus on the left. This becomes sum over k and l, and xk squared, which we can write as xk, yeah, let's just write it xk squared, yl minus xk. Now, this is a little bit different, right, because we have two sums, k and l, and this time it's not xk squared, it's xk xl, yl. And this is what equals mb. Now, so this actually solves the whole problem. So we know that m equals this first expression here divided by this determinant. And the y-intercept equals this expression here divided by that determinant. Now, does it equal anything um, familiar? If we look at m itself, And we divide the numerator <coughs> and the denominator by d. We get that m equals sum over l x l y l minus 1 over d sum k and l x k y l divided by x i squared minus ij x i x j. Now, each of these expressions um, actually show up in statistics uh, quite often, and they're actually given special names. We call the, let's do the denominator first, since this one um, only involves a single data set. 
This is called the variance of the data set x, where x vector equals x1 through xd. And it's also written as var, oops, var of x. And this just equals, by definition, the sum of the xi squares minus xij, xi, xj. So that's what the variance is, by definition. And the covariance um, is, involves two data sets, our x's and our y's. So it's of x and y. And this is defined by, I think you know people have different notation. I don't know what the notation is. I don't really care. <laughs> um, but it's this expression on top. So this is sum L, XL, YL minus 1 over D. Oh, did I forget a 1 over D? I did. This should have a 1 over D here. Minus 1 over D. Um, X, K, Y, L. That's an L subscript on that last um, Y. So we have that our linear regression problem actually derives for us um, the variance and the covariance of our data set. And we also have explicit expressions, if we wanted to, um, for the least squares uh, solution, if we want to fit data to a straight line curve. In the next video, we won't apply this general result because I don't think anybody would expect you to memorize something like this. Instead, we'll set up the problem in an explicit example, redo the whole procedure just so you get a feel for it with specific numbers involved, and, um, and how you would actually compute the inverse without all of these sums or anything like that if you're just given a relatively small data set. If you're given relatively large data sets, then you might want to go through this approach, or you might have to program something um, that does it for you.